any player that goes in with an injury and you know sulks every day is in a bad mood you only bring others down and ultimately you know you want to see the team doing well Hello and welcome to Fulfilling Your Potential in partnership with the club's official fulfillment and logistics partner, Habu. Here we discuss the challenges of being a professional footballer and how to overcome them in order to fulfill your potential. Today we're at the London Stadium, the home of the Hammers with four West Ham United footballers at the very top of their game. Let's meet them. Danny Ings, Grace Fisk, Kirsty Smith and Ben Johnson. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for updates on all the latest West Ham United content. Ben, let's begin with you. You signed for West Ham United when you were seven years old. Seven years old? How good are you on the playground at seven years old? Are you that much better than everyone else? Yeah, I was. Um, <laughs> Confidence. I think all of us here would say the same. Kirsten, was that your experience? Were you just like... Um, I guess it was a bit different because I guess as girls, we had to actually play against the boys, which... I think is even a higher level, so yeah. And Grace, you had a, an interesting kind of early aspect of your career where you actually played in America for a, for a few years. So what was, how old were you when you actually switched and went to America? Yeah, I was 17, 18, um, and I was quite big on, like I wanted to get a degree. Um, I wanted to go to university. And yeah, I basically obviously played for my university team and got a degree at the same time. And it was like the best three years of my life. It was amazing, yeah. And Danny, when you hear like Ben, obviously, <laughs> West Ham Academy. He's at a Premier League club his whole career, but that's very different to your kind of story. You actually dropped right down into non-league at one point, didn't you? Yeah, even from, from as a kid, I, I didn't get into an academy. Coming through at Bournemouth, Bournemouth were in a very difficult situation. They were close to going into administration at the time. And when I got my first contract, they sent me straight out on loan. It's probably the best thing that actually happened to me because it, it toughened me up. And then when I came back, I was a completely different you know, guy physically. And it kind of taught me what I needed to do to adapt yeah, how, how to, I mean, is it really rough? I got kicked quite a bit because <laughs> I, was, I was a youngster, not only by opposition teams, but in training every day from my own team. It's, in training from your own teammates? Oh, yeah. Well, that doesn't make sense. If I was running rings around and they'd boot me, that's what it was <laughs> really? like. Yeah, that's what it was like in, in League One. But no, in terms of my journey, I wouldn't have it any other way than the way I had to come through and playing at all different levels is a really good experience. Does it give you a bit of a... Are you different to other strikers who have always been kind of at Premier League clubs, do you feel there's a bit of a difference? I think there's different in development, for sure. Um, I think when players are in academies from an early age, you get taught different things. Uh, whereas, as I said before, it was more kind of rough around the edges and you have to be very tough, especially going out alone to Dorchester. It was such a good experience, but at the same time, I'll be bruised all over. But it was, as I said, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Kirsty, you've had some unbelievable experiences in your life. You've played for Manchester United, but do you remember the first time you played in front of a big crowd? Does that stick in your mind? I think the first time there was a proper crowd was actually when I played for Scotland, just having a packed out crowd. Like, it's kind of a feeling you can't really describe. Like, you block it all out, but like, you have to be in the moment as well. Like, you're there to play football and just play your own game. So I think for you, it's just focus and make sure you're on your game for that crowd to put on a good show. Grace and Kirsty, what more can be done to support the women's game? I think just whole visibility and just, yeah, seeing what we can be and what we can achieve. And just like Kirsty said, it's just visibility. Like our games are on TV more now. Teams in the WSL are playing at the men's stadium. So yeah, just like making it more visible and more accessible for everyone to come and watch. Um, and I think, you know, it's obviously going in the right direction and it's just got to keep pushing on and and encouraging girls to come and watch and play themselves. I wondered if we could talk a bit about, a little bit about setbacks, specifically kind of injuries. And Ben, I know you actually cracked your back, right? You broke a bone in your back. Can you talk us through that and kind of how you overcame that? Yeah, I think I was 17 at the time. Yeah, first injury I had and just went to, to cross a ball and overcooked it really. And it was just the weirdest feeling, like in pain. The, the only way I could explain it is like, my top half was disconnected from my bottom half. It was so weird, nose here. When you're injured, it's not so much the pain, it's like the disappointment and probably the trauma of being out for a while and all of that is probably the hardest thing to to overcome, but it is, that's football. You're, you're gonna have your opportunity and there's gonna be times when you have to step off the pitch um, and it, it helps you build a lot of character. 
That's good to hear. How about you, Kirsty? Have you had any injury struggles? To be honest, I've had a calf strain every season um, for the last like three years. The same area every time. There is a lot of struggles with it. Like you are, there's times when you'll be in the gym on your own, like a lonely experience, but it's always a time that you can actually learn from and grow as a person, I think. Danny, how about you? <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> so the most you know, injured part of my body has always been my knees. I've had five knee operations in my career. My first year at Burnley, I, my foot got stuck in a hole and my knee twisted and came back the other side from a bad tackle, just two years, just gone like that. So mentally, when I first signed for Burnley, I was young, uh, extremely young, moved to the other end of the country. And yeah, it was, it was a difficult time. I was away from the family and everybody. But yeah, I managed to overcome that situation. And the biggest thing for me is, as long as I come back a better athlete, then I'll give myself more of a chance. Obviously, we've talked a lot at the moment about being in the team, but I wanted to talk a little bit now about maybe times you've spent outside that first 11 and having to battle your way back into the team. Then you've had a, a little bit of experience of that. Mentally, how do, you, how do you cope with kind of falling out of the team and, and how do you get the mental resilience to try and work your way back in? It is extremely difficult because footballs are, it's been our life, it's our passion, it's our hobby, it's everything in one and it's our job as well. So it's hard sometimes, I'm young um, and I'm a bit short-sighted and I don't see the bigger picture at times. So it, it does become difficult because I just want to play and make a name for myself and, and just do well. You need to be angry in a good way, but park it and when you're there, control what you can and, and always give 100% because it's out of not just respect for yourself, but for, for the boys and, and the coaching staff too. Grace, you've moved around a few clubs. When you first join into a, a new club, is there a part of you that like, you have to demonstrate your character, but at the same time, not really sticking your head too far out there because you don't want to be, yeah, you know, well, so give I, the wrong impression. Yeah, when I joined West Ham, it was middle of the season because I, I came from America from college straight to West Ham and I've been at West Ham ever since. But I think the first couple of weeks, you just I just keep my head down, like keep yourself to yourself. And then kind of you grow in confidence like on the pitch and off the pitch. I always think similar to Curse, like I didn't have any issues coming in. Like, and I'm quite a chatty person anyway and I like getting along with people. So obviously that makes it easier, but like the clubs, we've obviously got a great group of girls, just like Curse said. So I found it pretty easy sailing in. And Danny, you've moved around a bit. Mm -hmm. You've been the new guy multiple times throughout your career. How, how, uh, West, you must have nailed it by the time you've come here. What's your kind of, op how do you operate when you come into a new club? <laughs> <Giggly. laughs> um, it's, it's hard to explain. So when, I, when I was younger and, and moving to new teams, I'd, I'd always say it's like the first day back at school after the six weeks holidays. Mm. There's that feeling you'd have in your belly. And the more and more years you're in the game, I think it becomes easier. I mean, at West Ham, apart from Ben, everyone else is all right. <laughs> but it was actually probably the easiest transition to come here, I'll be honest. It, it was. It, within about a couple of weeks, it almost felt like I was here for a year. I think because of the situation that we're in, it, it's so important for us all to stick together. And I think that's how they welcome you straight away. It's, it's not a case of you want everyone to like you, but you want everyone to respect you and, and see what you're bringing to the team. And then for me, everywhere I've been, I kind of stay half quiet at first. But I think the older I get and the more experience I get within the game, um, you know, I'm seen as a senior lad now. So for me to go somewhere and be quiet would be quite strange. Um, but for me now, it's about helping, you know, younger players who are, you know, coming through and, and things like that, but also trying to put my stamp on things out on the training pitch every day. Everything you've learned through the game, maybe what's the kind of one piece of life advice you could give someone watching this? You grow up so quick, which you're, life lessons are accelerated and I do think that is a blessing in disguise. Mistakes are there to, to learn from, things are there to learn from um, and as long as you learn from them and as long as you build yourself back up and push forward again I think you're always in a good place and you're always better off than you were before. I think I've always stood by like if you love something and want to do it then you should always go and do that and make sure that you do. It comes with a lot of sacrifices and um, a lot of hard moments, but if you can get by them, you'll grow as a person and you'll learn a lot about yourself. So yeah, I think no matter what your journey is, it'll have highs, it'll have lows, but um, always stick by it and go for what you wanna go for.
sort of something I've learned, it's never actually as bad as it may seem in the moment. Like, it may seem like the worst thing ever that day if you've had a shocking game or you've had an argument with the gaffer or whatever, like, but you give it a week, oh, it's actually not that bad. Like, everything kind of blows over and it's going to be okay. Like, you just got to stick with it, kind of like her said. So, in that sense, like, you just got to, like, live for the highs and, like, the lows will obviously come, but you just got to, like, keep going and, and it's never as bad as it seems. I mean, Danny, you I mean, follow highs all of that. Low, yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. The that highs and lows of your career. I mean, you've been right at the time. I, mean, I can imagine some of the lows and non-league. What a journey you've been on too. Mm, for me, the best thing that I did was surround myself with the right people. Um, I think I could probably count on, on one hand my, my closest friends who I actually would take advice from because I know that they mean the best for me. Um, and they give me the opportunity to be the best version of myself. And I think if you can do that and, and you do have goals and, and targets that you want to achieve, whether it's in football or whether it's a different industry. I'd say surround yourself with good people and you know, give yourself the best chance at it. Thank you for watching Fulfilling Your Potential in partnership with our fulfillment and logistics partner, Habu. Remember, with hard work and determination, anything is possible. Good luck to all the young players out there chasing their dreams. We'll see you on the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for updates on all the latest West Ham United content.